Hi everyone, I am Mahesh. In this video, we are going to discuss how to avoid common mistakes as a Java beginner. Here you can see a method getFruit which takes string as a parameter and it compares with a string literal apple. If it is equal, it displays choose an apple. If it, it compares with mango and if it is equal, it displays choose a mango. And if it doesn't match us with either of them, it displays invalid fruit. And I have main method here where I create an object for this class and using the object I'm going to create uh, I'm going to call this method get fruit and I'm passing apple as the parameter. So let me execute this program. And you can see we get the output as choose an apple right now. Let's do the same thing differently. So now I'm going to create a new string object and going to pass the parameter as mango this time and calling the same method get fruit. So let me execute this program. So you can see it displays invalid fruit, right? You might be thinking like uh, it displays chosen mango. So what's wrong with this? Let's check now. So in the first case, when we pass apple as the parameter, it actually compared this with this type, right? So here it compared with double equals to. So in Java, so string literals are cached in the string constant pool, meaning whenever there is a string literal, right? So it is stored in a string constant pool and a memory address is allocated for that uh, string. And whenever you use that same string literal again, it points to the same memory address in the string constant pool. And when we actually called in the first case, so the method and pass the string literal, so it actually compared the memory addresses of these two string literals and as that matches, so it displayed the choose an apple. But in the second case, when we actually created a new string object, so it created a new object on the heap uh, for which the address will definitely be a different one. And here as this double equals to compares, you know, uh, the memory addresses of these uh, objects, so it didn't match it. So this is one of the most common mistakes uh, uh, nowadays Java programmer does and how to actually avoid this mistake is whenever we are comparing two string object contents, right? So we should be using the dot equals method of string. So this is how we should be using. So this equals method, what it does is it actually compares the contents of two objects semantically. That is, it actually compares the information or content of the objects instead of the physical memory addresses of these objects. So you can see now I'm using equals method of string object. And now let me execute the same program. This time you can see we got the desired result chosen mango, right? So uh, it actually compared the content of the object and this time it will match and has displayed the chosen mango as the output. And let's see another case here so i have integer object so which is a wrapper class for the primitive data type int and you can see i have two objects of uh, integer wrapper class and i have an same value to it and i'm comparing these two objects let me execute it so you can see it displays true right so fine now let me change the values with for this integer objects and execute it again and this time you can see it displays false this is because java caches integer values ranging from minus 128 to 20 127 sorry it is 127 so if the numbers are out of range integer values are out of range of this then it actually uh, displays false meaning it actually uh, then the object memory locations will differ that's the reason it actually is not getting matched in this case in the second case right so again how to resolve it is again using equals method so equals method actually compares the content of the objects instead of the memory locations so let me execute this so this time you can see it displays true right so whenever we are comparing two objects right so we should be using dot equals method so that it actually compares the content of the object. So that is the best practice when we are comparing two objects. Confusing about indexes in Java and a beginner uh, usually confuses uh, about this, uh, the index if it is uh, zero based or a one based. 
So let's understand that now. I have a main method here where I have uh, fruits as a string array and you can see some uh, objects got initialized to this array and I'm trying to access the first fruit that is apple. You can see it here. Let me execute this program and you can see it displays banana. So we wanted to display apple, right? So what happened here was uh, the array in index in Java start with zero. So we are trying to actually access the first index. So it displayed banana. So if I wanted to actually display the first object in the array, so array index start with zero. So we should specify it with zero here. So let me execute again. And you can see here it displays Apple this time. Let's see another example where I have an integer array where this time I have only one number in my array one element in the array and i'm trying to access the first element so let me execute it let me comment this out and execute this uh, integer array so this time you can see an error array index of bounds exception this is because you can see i have only one element in my array and array index start with zero so there is no other element with index one and i'm trying to access such an element so that's the reason i'm getting an error array index out of bounds exception so to correct this we should be specifying it with zero i have only one element in the array which has a, which index as zero so we should actually access it using the zeroth index so this time you can see it displays 100 okay i didn't actually uncomment this out okay you can see this this time it displays 100 right so remember uh, array index in java starts with zero and let's actually take another case so i have a string java uh, title which has the value as java programmer actually i wanted to access a substring of it that is a part of string i wanted to extract from this string so you can see it i'm using substring method of uh, string class and passing two parameters to it beginning index and end, in, end index so beginning index starts with zero so it should start with j j and three is end index so zero one two three so our expectation is it will display java right so let me execute it now and you can see it displayed only j a v so this is because so the beginning index of the substring method starts with zero uh, and the index uh, of beginning index starts with zero, but the end index starts with one. So it starts with one. So one, two, three, four. So in order to print four characters, so in order to print till the uh, fourth index, right? So as the end index starts with one, so we should specify here four. So you can see here now it displays Java. So the thing, thing to remember here is the substring method when we are using substring method of uh, string class so the beginning index starts from zero and the end index starts with one so let's take another case another similar case you can see there are a list of strings here and i have assigned some uh, cricketer names to it and you can see here i'm i'm trying to get the sublist of it same as like previous example where we got the substring, right? So in the same way, I'm going to get the sublist of it. And my index starts with zero. So from here, I wanted to access till third index, zero, one, two, three, maybe. So let's execute this. So we are getting some error here. Cannot find symbol list, okay? So I just need to import these classes, lists and arrays, okay? Let me execute again. Okay, we didn't un uncomment this sub names. So you can see only three names got displayed. So we thought like zero, one, two, three, still here, right? But it displayed only three because here again, sublist also. So the beginning index starts with zero, but the N index starts with one so one two three four if we wanted to display four so i should be specifying the index as four here so you can see this time it displays four elements in it as so the thing to 
uh, be remembered here again is so substring either substring or sublist so it actually the beginning index starts with zero and end index starts with one and let's see another case here where i have a calendar instance so let me import this calendar and i have a calendar instance where i am trying to get the uh, date out of it so date again is integer uh, so i am trying to extract the date out of this calendar instance which is of integer data type and i am trying to get the month extract month out of this uh, uh, calendar instance which is again a month so uh, month typically starts with like uh, january with one february with two march three and so on right so let me execute it now sorry i clicked on debug but anyway you can see here it actually says date equal to nine month equal to one so it actually gets the current date uh, so it's a uh, february 9th and you can see date uh, is displayed as nine but month is displayed as one so though february is the second month in a year it displayed one so with this uh, we can infer that uh, date is one uh, one based and month is zero based so month is zero based because uh, january is represented with zero eighth index and february was uh, indexed with one so you can see here month was one and date is nine so date has one based and month is zero based so all these things we need to remember or else like we'll be get uh, we'll be getting uh, errors so we just need to remember which are all zero based indexes and which are the one based indexes and the next one is about access modifiers so here we have an example where i have a person class i'm going to create an object for the person class so let's see what person class is let me move it to the right and here we have a person class where we have name and age as class data members and we have a constructor for person which takes name and age and assigns it to the class members we also have a check here for the name for a null pointer check uh, for name and uh, we are going to compare this age if it falls uh, between the range 1 to 100 if it doesn't fall between 1 to 100 and if name is null then we are going to throw an illegal argument exception right and we have a method called display which actually displays the name and age here of a person right now i created an object here person p1 so you can see i'm passing two parameters to this constructor and then i'm using this display method right so let me execute this program now you can see uh, name and age got displayed so from the display method all right now let's see this case like right let me pass null and age as zero to the constructor so i'm going to create a new object now where i'm going to pass the parameters as null and zero so it should actually execute this block and it should throw the illegal argument illegal argument exception so let me execute it and clearly it says illegal argument exception right so invalid name or age so name is null and age is also not within the range one and hundred so it is less than one so it entered into this if block and throw it throws the illegal argument exception right so fine now uh, one might think that we handle this case of like a null pointer for name and we actually have a check for the age right so but it is not true so because so let me comment this out let me show you something see when we created this object right p1 object for person class so uh, with the valid values right so this check is passed no and then it actually assigns name and age as well but after this step i'm actually accessing name and assigning the value as null and age as zero and trying to display the uh, and actually trying to display this values using the display method so let me execute it so you can see here it displays name as null and age as zero though we have this check in the constructor i am able to successfully bypass that check this is because i am able to access this class members easily out of the class because i am using the access modifiers which are very less restrictive so you can see public is less restrictive access modifier i'm using that for my name object and default is another less restrictive um, access modifier which i'm using for age right so in order to 
avoid this mistake one needs to have the most restrictive access modifier for your class members see i have private for my name and age as well and you can see here the compilation error clearly it says name has private access right so the private members can't be accessed out of the class and if we wanted to access this you can, uh, we can access them within the methods of the same class so this is how we, we can avoid this mistake so always whenever you are actually uh, writing your class members make sure it is most restrictive so this is about the common mistakes by a java beginner and how to avoid them that's all for this video thanks for watching